Okay, so before I go into alumni Canterburyness, uh, I guess I'll go a little bit into this uh, Act of Parliament. A lot of it is redundant just to get the legalese down, tied down. Basically, what happened is by 1844, Pierce Morton, uh, the head of the family at the time, had lost uh, his estates. He could, you know, had to file for bankruptcy, I suppose, and couldn't. The, the, the Irish potato famine had just destroyed uh, any wealth the family had, and so they, he had to he had to get rid of it. And there was a settlement that was, or an act of parliament that was acted upon to kind of round things up. I'm not sure legally why that would have been necessary. Again, I'm not a, a legal expert, but I'll go into some of the, the details here. It has a lot of genealogical information in it. Now, basically, I'll go in a little bit into Pierce Morton's life just for clarification. Now, this is, again, this is after Charles had died. Pierce ended up marrying at the age of 33, and he lists St. Peter's Church in Dublin. And amongst these uh, family documents here is where he got married to Louisa Somerville. I don't know exactly where she was born, or even if she was born in... Rossmeath County, Ireland. She's said to have been there. She was Louisa Somerville was the daughter of James Quayle Somerville. And I'm gonna guess. No, I'm not gonna go into that. Okay, their four children were Francis Armitage, Pierce Edward, John Darcy, and Arthur Pratt Wintermorton. Now I have a death date for Arthur Pratt Wintermorton as being 1871, but you know I just can't be sure. I couldn't find him in the 1871 census. I probably could have, should have said before 1871. Now, I don't know if I should say if I couldn't find him. My memory isn't that good for me to, to say that. I usually would, usually if I couldn't find him, I would say before 1871. Unfortunately, I don't have the benefit right now to search and see quickly to see where that came from. It would be one document amongst three huge boxes that I have here, so I'm not exactly positive that he died in 1871. He could have had children. And there's one very interesting blog about a man named Arthur P. Morton. I'm just going to quickly mention, could possibly be somehow related. It's um, this individual, whoever, I don't know his name, but nonetheless, um, there's a someone that digs for old bottles and things like that. For, for research, and he, oh, Jerry Kemp, okay, so this Jerry Kemp was the father of his, the father of uh, Jerry Kemp's maternal grandmother, Ruby, um, was a man named Arthur P. Morton, that was born in 1872 in Boston, Lincolnshire. Now, so far, I have preliminary death of 1871. Gosh, just missed you by a year. But I have the spurious location of England, and it isn't very specific. It tells me I didn't have very much specific information about it, this person's supposed death. And if uh, Arthur Pratt, Pratt, Pratt Winter Morton was in fact married, and if um, he had a son also named Arthur P. Morton, or Pratt Morton, um, then this individual here may be a descendant of Dr. Charles Morton. I don't know. I haven't had a chance to, to ask him yet, but that was one of the things that was on my mind. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get back to some of the details here. Now, on this, okay, so what happened is, is um, Louisa Somerville and Pierce Morton married in 1839, and they had a marriage contract. <laughs> and um, that's part of, here it is, in consideration consideration of the said marriage okay that's why I was talking that's why I was talking about Dr. Charles Morton a, a year earlier here it is um, why was why wasn't there some kind of dowry or marriage contract for them don't know it doesn't make any sense um, unless there's more to Dr. Charles Morton than we know which seems to be indicative but anyway amongst these documents are lists of all the possible uh, 
heirs of Pierce Morton, I guess by common law. Okay, and they go into some detail here. They they mention the Emil Pondro, and they also mention Charles Stewart Clark. And I am just absolutely boggled as to who Charles Stewart Clark could be. I don't know. That could be very remotely. Okay, and we just got some very little snippets here all over this thing. It's very repetitive, but they're basically um, where it's got Edward Morton, Saville, Edmund, and Darcy. These are all the siblings of, um, of Pierce Morton. And uh, see, Emile Condro, let's go back into this. So here's Frances Armitage Morton. Did she marry? Now he, she married Henry Meredith Cruz. I didn't cover that. But up here, there is a Charlotte, Elizabeth Charlotte, who married Emile Gabriel Condro and had a daughter. And that's who they're talking about here. So prior to um, 1844, this Elizabeth Charlotte Morton. No, they're talking about Emile Gabriel, they're talking about him. I don't know who Charles Stewart Clark is, and he could be the individual that married Charlotte Elizabeth Condro? I'm going to have to look into that. I really don't know. If I find a Charlotte Elizabeth uh, Clark, then I'm going to know if she married him. I just don't have a marriage record. I'll open my way back. So that's a lead that I have not looked into. Okay. And then it says, uh, said Edmund Morton and Darcy Morton died before they came entitled to the sums. So basically, this document kind of goes through Charles Carr Morton's will. <laughs> I've yet to see Charles Carr Morton's will or any, any mention of it anywhere, even in the archives. This arc, this will exists somewhere. I don't know where to find it. If it, if it was one, maybe it'd be in Dublin. Who knows? It's certainly not at the UK archives. Um. Okay, so I could supplement what's going on there, back to these records. Um, okay, now it says Rebecca Morton, this is actually Rebecca Smith, was born in Devonshire, England. I think it, a farm, February 28, 1814. Do I have that? We're back on the subject of Edward Morton, February 28, 1814. Um, she was the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Rebecca Smith. She was married August 1836 at in Sidbury Church. Don't have the exact date. James Morton was born, and James Morton, of course, would be the son. March 13, 1850. The only reason why they have him in there is he passed away. Everybody else lived a very long life. <laughs> Children of Dr. Edward. Now this here is the journal of Pierce Edward Morton, July 15, 1860. This is after his father had died. And um, he's just talking about that he was at the Royal Observatory and woken up and this, that, and the other thing. Um, pretty much discusses his trip over to Canada and he was traveling and he goes by St. Helena if I got that right. He makes a couple drawings. We're talking, this is July 1860. I think I remember um, right around here him mentioning St. Helena. If I remember reading this right. Anyway, so I haven't studied all the details here, but pretty much it gets into just what happened on the trip. Here it is. The southmost two-thirds of the island of St. Helena, 30th July, 1816, heading northwest. Now this may be several pages long. I haven't transcribed it, but it, it's a lot of detail of a person's life, but not enough to solve anything. Okay, now this is the writing of Pierce Morton. He wrote this at Kilnacraw House. Valley James Duff, 
And he says, My father died 20th May 1819 in Dublin, buried at St. Thomas. My brother John lost in the... I don't know what that says. At, at Hydra, 1825. Charles, the eldest brother, uh, died 2nd of October 1832. This is the person that said to have committed suicide. Right there, Wright's Hotel. And he's buried at Twickenham, so I know that the death record, both in Edward Ironside, you know, in the revised version of Edward Ironside's history of, of Twickenham, I forgot the exact name of it, but um, he, he has a burial entry for Charles Morton also uh, in 1832, and I was, at one point I was wondering if that was Charles Carr Morton, but it wasn't. And then here he's got Darcy, my youngest brother, died at Sidmouth, and he's buried at Slocum. Myself only a 